Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <clears throat> Today I'm going to start the topic that is functional dyes. We have already discussed in our previous lectures what the dyes are. We have also discussed different types of dyes. Have given you in detail uh, introduction about the acidic dyes, basic dyes, and a thorough uh, detail has been discussed about the reactive dyes. Reactive dyes were of two types, you know, the vinyl sulfone paste and the those were uh, <coughs> which used cyanuric chloride, they were called as the cyanuric based reactive dyes. So dyes could be in it any types. Among those types, among those dyes, there is a relatively new concept that is called functional dyes. What the functional dyes are? <coughs> Actually, they are supposed to be such dyes which are actually the colorant molecules which give color to the cellulosic fibers, to the textile materials, as well as they do carry some additional properties as well. Additional properties as well. Such dyes are called functional dyes. So, what is the prime? <coughs> uh, property of a dye that it should impart color, that it should impart color to the textile material, that's the prime uh, property required feature of the dye. In addition to that feature, that the dye can make a bond with the cellulosic fiber, so can dye that cellulosic material, textile material. Additionally, it has some other functions as well, then those can be called as functional dyes. What the, those <coughs> additional functions could be. There are quite a many, but only if you let me start with the discussions, you know. Uh, let's say <coughs> there is a property that is called UV protection. We have an idea UV radiation during the summer season. Those radiations are of a higher energy, they cause skin burns, they cause, you know, skin rashes to people who have a sensitive skin. So now people with the passage of time develop dyes, which are dyes, colored molecules, as well as they provide UV protection as well. They have the ability to act as a UV protectant, mean they can absorb UV light UV radiation that are coming directly from the sun. So they actually try to save our skins from the UV radiations. Such dyes are called UV protecting dyes. How they actually manage such properties? There must be certain part of the dye molecule. There must be some sort of a group over there. There must be some sort of an aromatic ring over there or some sort of functionalities there in the dye that has the ability to absorb UV radiations, you know. So, dye at the same time is being used for the dyeing purposes, it imparts color. At the same time, it is also providing UV protection. So, then that dye will be called as a functional dye, you know. Second, another very much required property in that very respect is <coughs> that is antimicrobial. antimicrobial properties. Mean the dye molecule has certain inherited group, inherited um, functionality that is active against the microbes. Mean that dye molecule when they are applied on the on the textile materials on any cellulosic fiber, you know. The surface of the fiber becomes colored as well as. Secondly, the surface of the textile material of the cellulosic uh, <coughs> textile materials, they become active against the microbes, mean they are active against the bacteria, they are active against the fungus, something like that. So, it is very much important as far as the medical textiles are concerned, you know. If you 
you have any medical textiles, the dresses of the medical professionalist, you know, and secondly, the bandages that we apply on wrapping the bones for the healing purposes, actually, those dyed textiles, those dyes materials, dyed uh, cellulosic fibers, they do have the ability to provide protection against the microbes as well. So, that dye material, that colorant molecule has the ability to impart such properties in addition to its basic property that was to dye, to give, to give, to produce color. So, it is an additional property. So, that sort of a colorant molecule will be called as a functional molecule that is a dye that will be a functional dye or a functional colorant. So, this is how the dyes are supposed to be the functional dyes, you know. This is the basic idea about the <coughs> chemistry, about the nature of the functional dyes. How you could produce those dyes, uh, you can involve actually, let, let me start with the number two properties. If we want a dye to impart antimicrobial property as well in addition to its in, in its its a coloring property then we need to keep on a bioactive functionality a bioactive moiety in that dye molecule if we able to keep if we able to produce if we able to install that uh, functional molecule functional moiety in the dye then automatically that colored molecule will become a antimicrobial in nature, you know. How that could be done? We have an idea there are so many <coughs> there are so many molecules, compounds which are bioactive in nature and they're commercially available. Let's say people would have known about benzimidazoles, a five member drink, you know. Yes, you should have a, this sort of a compound. You may have five member ring called benzimidazoles. They are bioactive biologically active, it has an inherent property to act as an antimicrobial agent. It has so many antioxidant, antifungal, uh, anti-malarial, many other bio uh, potentials are there in this molecule depending upon the substituents around. Okay, so this is very easily commercially available or you can generate this body very easily in your labs as well through simple two, three steps reaction, you know. <coughs> If you start with this body and generate a dye, automatically that dye will become a bioactive, it will become an antimicrobial dye or the other way around. You can start from any other molecule, but you can use this body as a coupler, okay? You can use it as a coupler starting from any other molecule. If we use it as a couple, even then it will be, become part of the dye at the end, you know. So as soon as it will, will become a part of the dye, that dye molecule, that colorant will become an, a bioactive. <clears throat> so both strands are followed by the people. Either you start from the bioactive molecule and try to convert it into any form of a dye as per the requirement, or you start from any other molecule, but you use the bioactive component, bioactive molecules as a couplers. So both processes are adopted by the people to generate functional dye. Let me explain <coughs> a bit in detail now. Let's say we have a benzimidazole, okay, and <coughs> <clears throat> mm. 
let's say we have a benzamidazole and we go for simple nitration of this body okay if we go for simple nitration of this body then what could have happened we will receive a nitro group okay so we'll have a nitro group over here as well <coughs> so then as usual we can go for reduction we can go for reductions so what will happen we will have the corresponding amine group at the benzamidazole moiety you know so this would become something like that as soon as we have received the primary amine okay at this position so easily manageable through nitration and reduction then we can go for yes diazotization yeah we can go for diazotization using sodium Uh, sodium nitride and HCl keeping the temperature 0 to 5 degree that is very much the requirement of the reaction we have an idea then what happens then something like that <coughs> so we will have something as usual we will get a corresponding diazonium salt you know we can get the diazonium salt is that fine so as usual as per the old chemistry concept now we can bring in any coupler any coupler let's say we bring in sort of naphthol you know alpha naphthol we brought that in we have an idea the naphthols are frequently used as couplers so what could happen then we will have this is the naphthol here is your diazonium so this is how we are going to have the product the coupling of the diazonium salt received from the benzamidazole this is the diazonium received from the amine <coughs> coupled with the naphthol gives us this product and this will be a colored molecule we can convert it into a salt yes simply by reacting with any base you know so this will become a dye as we have an idea it will become an azo dye you know and due to the presence of this bi active group this is pi active group as we discussed in the al uh, in right in the start it will become azo functional dye functional azo dye azo functional dye you know because it has the property to act as antimicrobial as well you know after the preparation the dye could be used for the evaluation of its antibiotic properties antimicrobial antifungal antibacterial properties by adopting relevant you know uh, assays by activity assays you know so this is how a functional dye could be produced an azo dye a functional dye could be you know an an azo dye it can be a non azo dye it could be a reactive functional dye it could be a direct functional dye 
it could be an acidic functional dye, it could be a basic functional dye. So whatever the chemistry, whatever the nature of the dye could be, it becomes functional once we introduce one of the bioactive compound, bioactive entity, moiety, functionality into the dye. As I have done over here, we have received an azure dye, however, this presence of the benzimidazole have imparted, you know, uh, functionality that is my antimicrobial properties. The resultant dye has become as a functional dye. So this is one way, one of the aspect that we can prepare the functional molecule, functional dyes, starting from active molecules, functional molecules, as I have just started from Benzimidazole. We can do the other way around as well. If we start from other molecules which are not active, but we can bring such bioactive molecules at the end as couplers, then those dyes could also become the functional dye. Let me discuss with that as well now. <clears throat> so, this is how the one aspect I have been discussed. We started off from the Benzimidazole and then moved on. Oh, sorry, just this. this let me do that the other way. This is a, a, a big mistake in the structure of the benzimidazole. It is supported, supposed to be two nitrogens, something like that, you know. The other nitrogen, yes, is supposed to be here. This nitrogen obviously contains one proton, you know. This carries one proton, you know. So this is how the benzimidazole is supposed to be actually, I am missing one of the nitrogen that is supposed to be here. So, <clears throat> so that is how a functional dye could be produced starting from a bioactive compound you can lead to the dye and at the moment we have prepared here uh, an azo dye. Let me go the other way around as well now. Let us we start with <clears throat> this sort of the molecule very much known in color chemistry in textile dyeing in dyes that is called H acid. Let us we start with this body <clears throat> as we know it has a primary amine so simply we can go for diazotization <clears throat> as per routine you know. and we can generate the diazonium salt no problem with the rest of the structure then obviously we need to bring in the coupler we need to bring in the coupler after producing the diazonium salt so now we can bring in coupler that is some sort of a bioactive molecule you know we can bring that one in let's say again we have the benzimidazole options available with us it is supposed to be nitrogen yes that I forgot last time so this is how it is supposed to be the benzimidazole has been introduced as coupler so what could have happened now it can react with the beta position at the benzene so we will have sort of product is supposed to, is supposed to look like this way you know uh, we have SO3 and A we have SO3 and A It reacts with benzimidazole, yes, this way. 
this one. So this is how it has got coupled with benzimidazole and it has become an azodiagene. But of an active bioactive molecule like benzimidazole has been used as a coupler. So once it gets installed into the dye, <coughs> this dye will become bioactive. It will have uh, antimicrobial properties. So it will be termed as uh, functional dye, you know. So once you start from some molecule which is apparently seems non-bioactive, does not have the ability, ability to impart any extra characteristics to the dye. But you can move on at the stage of the coupling, you can bring in some sort of a coupler which is a bioactive molecule free, uh, available in the commercially available in the market or you can synthesize them in the lab and you can couple them to corresponding dyes as the dye carries the active part now so it will act as a functional dye. So this is how that's the <coughs> second way to produce this one. Let me explain one more thing. As I've told you a functional dye could be direct dye, it could be reactive dye, it could be uh, an azo dye, it could be non azo dye or it could be some sort of uh, reactive dye. Let's say we want to generate a functional and a reactive dye. Functional and a reactive dye. As we discussed <coughs> in one of the, my last lectures, a reactive dye is supposed to be which carries vinylson phone groups or the dyes which carries anurachlorides, you know. So let's say if we have prepared this dye which carries benzimidazole as an active constituent it is supposed to be bioactive functional dye but at this point of time it's not a reactive dye okay so what one could do we can bring in cyanurachloride as we have an idea about the <coughs> chemistry of the cyanurachloride that it's a triazine molecule you know it's a triazine molecule where three chloro groups are attached on the carbons. This sort of a molecule. It reacts with the dyes through nucleophilic substitutions. Okay, as we have explained, I've given a complete react lecture on mm, reactive dyes, which are based on anorical right. So you were. Uh, supposed to go through the lecture in order to get the better idea about the reactive dyes. So at the moment what I am trying to convey, if we have prepared a dye which is a bioactive one but it is not a reactive dye, we can change it into reactive dye just by reacting it with sanorical right. So what will happen, there will be a nucleophilic substitution reaction. So then what happens? there will be a bond between the dye and the sonorical rights, you know. So it will look like this one. And we have an idea these two remaining chloros, you know, this chloro and this chloro group, they are available to react with cellulosic fiber because reactive dyes are supposed to react with cellulosic fibers through nucleophilic substitution reactions as well. It has very well explained in my lecture that I'm just given you uh, as a reference a while ago. So, at the moment, what has happened? We have prepared in a reactive dye, and the reactive dye also carries one functional group, functional biology, bioactive one. Then this will be called as a functional reactive dye. You know. It will be termed as functional reactive dye, reactive functional dye. It will be called as reactive functional dye. What was the approach used here? Here we started off from the compound that's HSR. Okay, we went. Uh, for its diazotization, the diazonium salt was produced. Then, at the stage of the coupling, we 
bring in a cupola which is supposed to be sort of a um, you know by active molecule has the ability to act as antimicrobial so we use it as a coupler so this became the resultant azodi due to the presence of the hydroxyl group on the resulting dye we proceeded further and reacted with the cyanuric chloride and through the nucleophilic substitution reaction we received reactive functional dyes as i've told you a functional dye could be reactive could be as a could be non as a whatever its type or class could be you know what is the requirement requirement is that the dye should give some extra property then it is applied on a textile material as this prepared dye will fix on the cellulosic fiber through covalent bonding so it will be reactive dye and the presence of this functional moiety will make it will make it a functional dye being that cloth the cellulosic fiber the cellulosic material which will be dyed with this dye will also have the properties of antimicrobials you know this is the basic concept behind the synthesis the preparation of functional dyes there are so many other that that, that that that's one one aspect one very simple example that i've given you that is of the benzimidazole there are some other reactive heterocycles you know that could be used as either the starting compounds or they could be used as the couplers so they you can use them as per your other choice there are some other compounds like uh they are called another type of compounds called triazoles 1 2 3 4 carbon number 4 which is 5 they could also carry any substituents so you may use this sort of heterocycles which are active logically active entities huh they are easy to prepare in the lab you can use prepare them again as per my previous discussions you can use them as a starting material you can impart nitration then you can convert this nitro group into amine then reduction diazotization and you can bring in any other coupler and you can keep your azo dye functional azo dye or you may convert it into a reactive azo dye just explain to you so it will be the way that has been discussed the other way will be you can start from h acid you can start from j acid sulfonylic acid anthranilic acid any body or simply any in the body which has an amine you know if we are interested to prepare azo dyes you know so we can go for diazotization ah uh, we can move that on and then we can use this body as a coupler we can couple them together as far as it will be installed into the dye molecule it will impart its properties like antibiotic anti uh microbial in nature the dye will become a functional dye so both can be used you know let let me clarify a bit uh, with extended structure as i've just told you a triazol could be this sort of five member ring yeah so you may install over here this sort of very easy to install and then we can have this sort of functionality here the benzene of course then one can go for nitration over here further reduction over here fine then subsequent diazotization over here and then subsequent coupling let's say we go for coupling with uh, uh, 
phenol only okay so what will happen nothing will happen there will be a coupling between let's say at arc and para position there must be a nitrogen nitrogen so this will be a sort of a di molecule this is di molecule and azo di okay it's an azo di and due to the presence of this body it's a triazolic moiety it's a triazole and triazoles are antimicrobials in nature so it can impart property to the dye the rest is the dye molecule so what we have done over here we started from the triazole okay then we perform nitration reduction and dye the and a couple it with the other couple you would have moved the other way around let's say we have this sort of a compound carrying a mino and we have generated this triazole that's so easy to generate this body then we can go for yes diazotization then we can use this body as a coupler this compound which carries triazole it would Mm, act as a it could act as a coupler you know as well so if you bring in as a coupler then this diazonium salt will react with and couple it so the same sort of structure could be achieved again again we can convert this into its salty form just by reacting with some base so it will become this sort of a di or if we have a phenol over here so we just can bring in again what is this sanore chloride we can bring in sanore chloride you know and then a nucleophilic substitution reaction it can give a subsequent reactive dye reactive functional dye so it will be bonded like this one the rest of the two chloro groups are available to react with surface of the cellulose fabric cellulose fiber to become permanently fixed there to act as a reactive so this is how the dye molecules are when they are supposed to be functional dyes means the dye molecule should have an extra property at the moment what i have discussed of this case the dye should have an extra property that is antimicrobial property this property is very much anticipated very much welcomed in medical textiles you know because it imparts extra features once such dyes are applied to the uh, textile materials so this is how I'm to wind it up now. I hope you got the message, you got the idea behind the functional dyes, you got the idea about the involvement of the <clears throat> functional molecules, you got the idea how those functional molecules could be involved either as starting materials or either from the, as a couplers, and you can produce any type of dye you can produce. Azo dye, you can produce direct dye, you can produce, you know, vinyl sulfone based dyes or acid based dyes. As per the requirement, you can use those bioactive starting materials. Okay, I hope so. You got the message, you got the idea. If you have an issue, if you have any problem in understanding the topic, please don't hesitate to contact. You can put your question in uh, comment area. I will try to respond, inshallah. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum.